you weren't answering your phone. It's two o'clock in the morning. You said any time, day or night. What? It's me. I'm sorry about the late call. This is an emergency. Not at all. It's what I'm here for. It's what I pay you for. Can you come to my place? Now? Right now. I'm concerned I can't already hear you getting dressed. We're, we're in lockdown, Fiona. It's about the government leaks. Oh, Christ. This is the two new girls. They're with me right now. They're not new. And that will be the last time you call them girls. I'm sorry. Hasn't Victoria been dealing with all this? We're at the point where we need you. Fiona, I'm not sure this is... Don't ring the doorbell. My dog's trying to sleep. Well, now, you're in no doubt whatsoever. We need to get it up on the site before the producers of all the morning shows wake up. Do we now? And a push notification for the app. So I've got barely an hour to make a call. This has all happened very quickly and you haven't blinked. But we can't afford to be even a little bit wrong. So walk me through it from the start, step by step. OK. Um, it was the start of lockdown. We were in the first wave of staff to get furloughed and we'd already watched all of Tiger King. I mean, this is when people were just starting to learn what PPE stands for. Reports of shortages were starting to crop up everywhere. Joan? There's a government-owned warehouse in an undisclosed location, purpose-built for the storage and distribution of hundreds of millions of face masks, aprons, body bags, 500 million pounds worth of equipment. The management and distribution of the stockpile had been outsourced to a private company. Then without notice, that company was sold. Not the stockpile itself, but just the ability to get it to the front line. There was so much chaos and mismanagement, they had to rope in the army to help get it out. Why don't I know about this? It got buried on the website. This went through Jonathan. I had no idea it was this chaotic from the outset. It lost us weeks. Sheer incompetence combined with disastrous timing. We're not even in control of our own PPE supply. That. This was the first in a trend of botched up government outsourcing that would repeat itself again and again. Oh, for fuck's sake. Two metres, please. Where's the door behind? Hi. 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 James, in-house counsel. Our junior medical correspondents, Libby came from the Inquirer, and Joan's been with Jonathan on the city desk. I didn't know we had senior medical correspondents. Well, we had to give them a title. They've had front page store. What have you done to your hair? Liam's idea. I don't know any senior editors with middle of the night walking privileges. You should consider yourself lucky too, James. A fucking lawyer in my house. You're close to this then. This is the biggest story any of us will ever work on, and Joan and Libby are at the forefront of it. Ah, she smells awards. This isn't a hundred-year-old war veteran doing laps in his garden for charity. Yeah, I understand. This is the government using a global pandemic to privatise public assets one piece at a time. Now you understand why you're here. How long have I got? Maybe an hour. Well, we need to loop in a couple of people. Where are you up to? Hello? A mutual friend gave me your number. I hope that's OK. Uh, of course. Who, exactly? You helped them with the PPE story. Ah, oh, yes. It's just it didn't actually get printed. I, I had a hard time finding it on your website, even when I knew what I was looking for. Yeah, I'm sorry, that won't happen again, I promise. We uh, we got caught up in the protest. I'm, I'm just, I'm not sure if I can trust the Herald. I, I have a classified report. It's quite alarming. OK. This is the simulation they ran. To gauge responses across multiple emergency sectors. Participants were told to fight a fictitious, worst-case scenario flu pandemic, affecting 50% of the population. Jonathan, was this when you got involved full-time? Yeah. The three of us turned it round in a day, and I wasn't going to let it get buried like their PPE story. You sure it was authentic? I made sure it was authentic, Victoria, just for you. It involved 1,500 officials from central and local government, public health organisations, prisons, local emergency... In, in a nutshell. The report didn't sugarcoat it. 
It's amazing how accurately it's predicted exactly what's happened. This is their own summary. The country's preparedness and response, its plans, policies and capability is not sufficient to cope with the extreme demands of a pandemic that will see a nationwide impact across all sectors. This was four years ago and we ignored it. Mm, it foresaw the escalation of a decentralised response that taints everything that's happening now. Each department had a plan. Nobody had oversight. No one was put in charge. Exactly. It can't be anyone's fault if it's everyone's fault. This gave us our highest web traffic for 18 months. It was picked up by every other outlet. The more sources came out of the woodwork. Once they knew they had a reliable mouthpiece, the dam burst. Science wasn't being listened to. They were picking and choosing whatever data made them look good, ignoring any evidence or advice that made them look bad. Okay, okay. So, why are we sat in Fiona's living room at three in the morning? What's the emergency? Standard rules have been suspended, so government contracts can be issued with extreme urgency. At least 177 contracts worth more than £5 billion have been awarded to commercial firms so far. Public bodies usually take months to award contracts. Within days of suspending the rules, they're handing out blank cheques to massive corporations, multi-million pound bids going uncontested. That's never happened before. They're outsourcing everything we'll need to come out the other side of this. Uh, testing centres, staff, laboratories, PPE. It's a power grab. Uh, a concerted dismantling of state healthcare and public services without any scrutiny or oversight. Funneled into the pockets of their friends and donors. It's a bonanza. The perfect cover just landed in their lap. There are individuals within the government exploiting the pandemic for personal profit. They're making fucking money out of it. Is everyone still there? This sounds like some kind of twisted liberal conspiracy. What? The tone is not hard to interpret. <laughs> the tone! <laughs> Don't. You know what I mean. Look, I'm not here in a political capacity. Oh, really? I'm here sure, to make sure... Fiona. I'm here to make sure we don't get sued into closing down a 200-year-old media institution. It's my front page, I'll decide what we print, and I don't think I've ever been accused of being liberal. What is the legal concern here? Everything up until this point has been levied under an umbrella term. The government ignored this, the government mishandled that. Now, you're accusing specific elected individuals of what is essentially insider trading and you're citing unnamed sources. Again, it's ridiculous. I'd say it's bar for the course. And in line with everything that Joan and Libby have written so far. Fiona, you can't print something like this without a verifiable source. We've got them. Great. Who? They're not called leaks for nothing. If we start printing names, there won't be any more stories. So this isn't principle, it's self-interest? No. Six hours ago, we received these. We've gone beyond advisors and external experts. These are people on the inside. Email chains, group texts, invoices. Signed documents. Look at the names. Look at the signatures. So you're just going to burn everything down and walk away in the middle of a pandemic? I'm sure I've got as many friends caught up in this as you do. They won't be friends for much longer, Fiona. You, you're giving away the next election on a silver platter. You'll be a pariah. For printing the news? For being the person who ends this political party. You don't think they'll destroy you right back? I have been banging their drum for 30 years. You're storming the cockpit at 38,000 feet with no idea how the plane lands. If there's one wrong date, one incorrect decimal point. There's not. It's airtight, Victoria. Then we're all fucked. Mm, that's the legal term, is it? I've got the story loaded. You say go, Fiona, and it's out there. If you do this, it all comes down. Not tomorrow, not next week. Now. It deserves to. I'll have no choice but to resign. <laughs> I'll resign if you don't do this. 
Have you got an ultimatum for me too? If you don't print this, Fiona, we'll take it to someone who will. 